where do you draw the line between making changes to a sound for sound design purposes I suck um, I prefer to replace this broken instrument um, welcome to Britain if I had uh, maybe a loose but semi-closed hat running sixteenths Hey guys, welcome to the Kane Audio Vlog. It's Friday, it's time for another Ask Me Anything. Usual rules apply. Comment anything you want below this video and I'll get back to you in next week's video. Uh, before I get on to last week's video, sorry I forgot to put my phone on silent. Uh, is there any house admin to cover? Uh, this week has flown by and if I look knackered it's because I am knackered. Uh, I've literally just woken up. Uh, it's late. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this before but uh, my girlfriend and I are expecting uh, well, my first child uh, any week now. So uh, yeah, so we spent last night at the hospital false alarm uh didn't get back till silly o'clock in the morning so that's why i'm knackered um so expect me to be really knackered soon because when it actually happens uh, uh i'm guessing i'm i'm gonna be a lot more tired um i had planned on doing a couple of other videos or at least another video this week uh didn't get around to that another thing is i'm doing up the house, I've mentioned this before, uh, we've been doing up the house room by room, um, so yeah, there's one more room down now, so I think that's probably why this week's flown by, because I can't think what I've been doing musically this week. No, I haven't got a clue, uh, so yeah, you will have to excuse the fact that my brain is all over the place at the moment. Um, Normal house admin though, Sonic Academy, Stoic, Tutorial, uh, thank you very much for the feedback I've had so far. A um, lot of people seem to be really enjoying that tutorial and, and they like the pace of it and everything, which is great. Um, as I said, you know, I am really proud of this one. I think it's probably my best tutorial yet. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll drop a link below this. Um, but otherwise go to sonicacademy.com and just search my name. Um, what else? Uh, Patreon. A uh, few people have signed up for the four sample packs. If you sign up for ten dollars, uh, you I will send you basically through the system uh, four sample packs. Uh, I am going to be looking for some more stuff as well because there are some people who are doing that regularly. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to add more stuff to that as and when. Uh, and I think that is it for house admin so let's have a look at last week's video i don't think there's a crazy amount of questions this week uh, which is probably a good thing because i don't know if i can answer that any uh right dream state 42 hey tom uh, another very interesting video thanks a lot i've also finally renewed my sonic academy subscription and started watching your how to make a stoic uh, really amazing how to so far i really like that you not only throw the bits and pieces together and call it a day uh, but actually give insight into your thought process really interesting and helpful uh, yeah i kind of do that with tutorials and i kind of figured that's where this YouTube channel is probably heading more towards where rather than, I mean, obviously for Sonic Academy and people like that, I'll do step by steps on how I do things, but I like to throw in my sort of thought process as well, because I feel like that's almost more important sometimes, um, because I think most of you guys watching these videos, you know how to just make a baseline. You know how to sidechain something. You know, you know a lot of the essential techniques. So I don't see the point in going through that over and over again with step by steps. Um, I think sometimes that what we all need is 
just a bit of an idea of something or a, a, a fresh approach to something. I think that's sometimes more important. So with my Sonic Academy videos, I try and sort of get both angles. With this YouTube channel, I I really feel like it's more on the, the thought process side of stuff. Um, <clears throat> Uh, really interesting and helpful. Also, re-watching some of your old videos, which leads me to my question. Um, I'm really curious about your approach to split the creation of a song into producing and mixing. I'm currently using the tried and true all over the place approach, uh, i.e. mixing as I go. But as you mentioned in your other videos, I'm currently starting to realise that I probably get in my own way. Uh, with not doing mixing separately. Sorry for the rambling, here's my question. Where do you draw the line between making changes to a sound for sound design purposes and when do you defer something to the mixing phase? As an example, if you have a feeling a kick might be lacking something or you like only the click or punch or of a kick and want to add the missing elements by layering in another sound, some EQing will probably be necessary to make both layers fit together properly. Typing this makes me feel this question is actually pretty stupid, but how much editing and processing of layers would you do in the sound design stage before thinking something like, hold on, I'm actually already mixing some parts of this song. Uh, thanks a lot, have a great week, you too. Um, so first of all, there's no such thing as a stupid question. There's only ever stupid answers. Um, and actually, I think that's a quite a good question because I don't, I don't know if maybe I've even thought of that before. So for me, I guess it's a question of time and energy, mental time and energy in that so let's say you're I don't know you, you've put together your your drum groove your melody idea and but but you're not you know you haven't finished writing the track you're still in the basic sort of sound design stage you're throwing bits together you're developing a melody and the kick is annoying you I would say definitely tweak the kick at that point but I think the question comes down to are you in the flow and inspired? And I think that's more important because if you're feeling creative and you're in the middle of writing some melodies, then, then now is definitely the wrong time to be fiddling with a kick drum. Um, so I guess it's kind of down to common sense, but also I think it, it's about that flow um, because creative flow is the one thing that we as artists really don't have much control over, you know. Um, so take, for example, my my personal life right now. You know, today I mentioned earlier on that I'm, I'm super tired. Um, sometimes when I'm really tired, I actually come out with my best melodies. But then sometimes I'm really refreshed, if that's the word, I'm, I'm rarely refreshed in life. But, uh, you know, sometimes I've had a good sleep and I'm, I've, I've not got any stresses and, and whatever, and I've got plenty of work going on and it's all good. And then, and, and then I feel really inspired and write some melodies. The point being is that there is no, there doesn't seem to be any consistent factor in my life that makes me feel creative or makes me more creative than one day than any other day. Um, so when you think about that, it, it for me, it makes me think, well, the, the creative flow, that creative when you're, for lack of a better word, in the zone, that's kind of the most important part of your production, really. Because the rest of it, for me, the rest of it is kind of scientific. Um, the rest of it is technical. And so things like a kick drum, for example, 
if you're thinking to yourself, oh, it needs a better transient or it needs more body or it needs whatever, those are technical things that you, you can hold on to and you can you know how to do that. You know how to uh, well, replace a kick drum or layer in a new kick drum or whatever. Those are those are technical techniques that you that you know already. Otherwise you wouldn't be thinking that kick drum needs X, Y, and Z. Um, so for me, it's always the creative bits that I have little control over that gets the highest priority. And I think that's that's where I draw the line is, is it going to interfere with the creative flow of this track? If it is, then forget it. I can do it later. If it's a technical thing, like changing a kick drum or working on some sound design or, or something along those lines then it can wait if i'm if i'm if i haven't quite got you know the hook of this melody right or you know i feel like the melody needs to go up at the end instead of down or it needs to resolve to something or well you know that sort of a thing then i'll i'll get on that straight away because that to me is the most important bit um I, I think that's probably true for everyone. Let me know if it's not true for you guys, because that'd be interesting. Um, for me, I don't have any control over when I'm creative. It, it just happens or it doesn't happen. And and this is why we have, you know, writer's block and, and creative block and whatever. Um, because that's always a struggle for all of us, because we, we, don't, we don't know how to control it. It's not It's not something we can switch on and off. Uh, I think that answers your question. Yeah, I am needing this coffee. Um, right. Yeah, so I guess that, I think that answers your question. I don't, um, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is, it's, you know, don't, don't get too carried away with that. You know, if, for example... Um, the, the the things I really push to separate are things like um, the fine details of that kick drum. So if, for example, you know, you're in the early stages of making a track and that kick drum, you know, is just totally wrong. It's 10 dB too loud. It's distorted. It's got huge, long, extended tails to it and you've, you're using a big rich sub bass that's, you know, the two things are just fighting each other constantly and they're fighting for, for space, then clearly that's the time to go, hang on a second, let's just sort this kick drum out and get that out of the way and put a decent one in there or whatever. Um, you know, obviously if something's just a quick tweak here and there, but if that kick drum is you know, 1 dB too loud and the transient isn't quite the your favourite kind of click. You know, if it's a, a bit more hi-hatty than it is a bit more rim-shotty, you know, then that's the kind of thing you can just go, oh, I'll do that later, that's fine, it's not a problem for now, let's get on with the rest of the track. Um, yeah. So yeah, hopefully that answers it. Uh, Raphael, I'm a simple guy. I see a new Dom Kane post. I already give it a like. Thank you. Um, Andrew Hollis. Hi Dom, no question this week. I have a suggestion for a keyword, Darktronica. Oh yeah. Oh man, I suck. Um, yeah, I don't think I mentioned this. Uh, if I remember, I'll drop a link below this video. Um, I've done, so I've done lots of these things in the past. Um, albums for uh, production companies that that put together music for TV and film and things like that. Well, you know, I've talked about it in these videos. Um, the vast majority of which I've done under, you know, uh, pseudonyms or, you know, fake names or whatever. Um, because they're, you know, I, I wouldn't want... Um, for example, if I did, I don't know, uh, some kind of waltz music or some baroque music or 
a rock track or uh, hell, even even if it was some dubstep or drum and bass or something electronic, but a totally different genre, I wouldn't want that going out on say Spotify and then everybody seeing that under my name and then everyone going, oh, Dom's doing dubstep now or whatever. So I'm always very careful to use a different name for these types of projects. Um, because if it's in a different genre, it's, you know, I don't want to be confusing people and I don't want it to be interfering with the work I've, I've already done or whatever. So I, I try to sort of keep those two things separate. However, um, I did an album called Dark Tronica recently-ish, a um, couple of months ago, with a good friend of mine, Paul. Uh, Paul Whitehead is another, uh, he's a... A library producer for library and production companies um, and yeah so I partnered up with him on an album that uh, in fairness it was his initial concept uh, Dark Tronica and the idea was to do electronica for film documentary horror anything weird I suppose and using big arpeggiators and analog synths and whatever so yeah so we 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 kind of put that together and built the album together and um yeah and i ended up thinking you know what i really love this album i'm really proud of it and i think it kind of fits in with my name as well it's not it's not too far away so this is the first one i think i've done for years that actually has my name on it um so yeah so that's why Andrew Hollis is suggesting Dark Tronica as a keyword. Um, and so, yeah, let's definitely do that. So if if anyone's watching this video, even if, even though we haven't reached the end of this video, uh, I normally give a keyword at the end, but the keyword will be Dark Tronica. So uh, you don't need to watch it to the end now. I may have just shot myself in the foot. Who knows? Anyway, yeah, so uh, if I remember, I'll drop a link below this video, but I might not because it's also the the guys at the label actually spoke to me yesterday and double checked a few things and they're submitting it to Spotify so I might drop a Spotify link just because I like to keep things consistent and I like Spotify these days otherwise uh, if you follow me on Facebook and Twitter and all of that then you've probably seen a link anyway so go find it there so there we go fanfan87 hey Dom my question this week uh, if one of your instruments affect computer breaks one day would you prefer to replace this broken instrument by a new one or try to repair it by another person or by yourself good question uh, cheers and damn, those heat, heat waves are really alarming. Uh, yeah, they sure are. It's kind of over now. I think it's just it hasn't stopped raining now. Um, welcome to Britain. If one of my instruments... So, <clears throat> I'll give you an example. My Moog Sub 37 had... Um, wasn't really broken, more of a... Uh, a bit of an, a technical issue with the filter. Uh, Moog sent me a new filter. I fixed it myself. I'm happy to do that. Um, however, my camera, if you remember, I'm back in the early days of a year and a half, two years ago of doing these videos, my camera broke. Um, that was something I was not willing to fix myself because I knew it was something wrong with, uh, the power leading to the sensor. So that was not something I was willing to fix myself. I think usually... I'll fix things myself. Um, I mean, I did, you know, my education was in engineering. So, you know, we did things like print circuit boards and uh, obviously build components. Um, so we did, you know, things like building compressors. So I, I kind of, and not that I'm particularly good at it, but I kind of understand the basics of the electronics, so sometimes I quite enjoy it. I have a really good soldering iron. Um, I have a good tool set, so I, you know I enjoy tinkering with things sometimes. Um, a lot of it comes down to budget as well. Um, you know, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that uh, you know me and my girlfriend are doing up the house, and um, 
you know, there are some things that we'll do ourselves. So, you know, we've learnt to plaster and paint and whatever. Um, we did actually get professionals in this week for the ceiling because we're happy to plaster the wall. Well, I say happy, that's not the right word at all. We're okay with plastering the walls. Um, but when it comes to the ceiling, no way. I, I think, so it's a case of understanding your limits as well. So with the camera, uh, you know, I knew I wasn't going to tamper with that. That was that was something that I just had to send to Canon and pay crazy amount of money and just get it done. Um, you know, with the ceiling um, in the house, it's not something I want to play with. It's not you know, it, with a wall. If if you if your plastering goes wrong on a wall, you can sand it down. You'll be all right. Uh, if your plastering goes wrong on a ceiling, the whole thing can come down, and I'm not willing to risk that. So. Uh, I think most of the time I'll give it a go myself and what I was going to say is a lot of it comes down to budget as well you know um, so plastering a whole room in a house uh, if you want professionals to do it around here you're looking at I guess five six hundred pounds to do walls and ceiling um, whereas to do the walls ourselves 50 pounds because it's just a case of buying the bits um so yeah so i think you know if you're doing up a house obviously you want to try and save some money um if you're fixing something well you want to try and save some money but there's only so far you can go sometimes uh yeah so i'm i'm happy with second hand stuff i'm happy with broken stuff i'm not um i i try not to be wasteful um, but I think there's a, there's an interesting discussion going on these days as well with um, what do they call it? Uh, planned obsolescence, um, which is when something is designed to break and something is designed to not last forever, basically. So if you think about you know your parents had a fridge or a freezer, or refrigerator, whatever country you're in, whatever you call it. Um, you know, those things 50 years ago lasted forever, um, whereas now they last maybe five years. And, and, you know, TVs, for example, big old TVs lasted forever. They were made to last. And if they broke, they were easy to repair. Um, whereas now, you know, a TV lasts maybe three, four years and the software goes out of date. Look, I've said about my computer, you know, my computer, don't get me wrong, is 10 years old now, but it's still 32 gig of RAM. It's still 16 cores. It's still, um, you know, a fairly fast, powerful machine. It's still perfectly fine at handling all of my Bitwig projects. I never or rarely have to bounce down to audio um, you know, it's perfectly powerful enough to handle 99% of circumstances. And, and as you guys can imagine, I'm not I'm not careful with Bitwig. I throw stuff at it. Um, so even though I have a powerful computer, Apple have designed it so that it, you know, they've designed the software to no longer be supported on my machine because of its age. And I don't think it's because of its power, because I'm fairly sure my computer is, is perfectly capable of handling whatever new OS X there is. But Apple won't let me have that OS X because they clearly want me to buy a new machine. So there are instances where, <clears throat> you know, this forced or planned obsolescence becomes a bit of a pain in the ass especially you know especially when we're talking about computers I, I can't remember how much that was new but um you, you know we're talking a 2009 mac pro whatever and it was top spec at the time as well it was a lot of money um and i wanted it to last 10 years at least which it has done but if i bought if I bought the top spec Mac Pro five years ago or three years ago, first of all, I'd have been buying old tech and it definitely wouldn't be lasting 10 years. Um, so I'm kind of hesitant to buy or spend the same money this time because I know full well the new Mac Pros, um, 
you know they're not they're not designed to last that long so um yeah i think that has an impact on these things as well uh, on the flip side of that though there are other devices that fall into that category but it can be a good thing so i'm not i'm not saying that you know nothing should ever be replaced because i think some things should uh, you know take mobile phones for example you know they're now getting so small that you kind of need that forced obsolescence because otherwise you know if you had loads of replaceable parts within that phone then you know you you're going to have a huge phone in your pocket basically because um you know like again i mentioned earlier on when you're talking about uh, printing circuit boards and things if if that circuit board had all replaceable parts um then the circuit board would need to be 10 times the size of whatever it is so um yeah so sometimes planned obsolescence is not a bad thing um but most of the time it is so there we go um yeah hopefully that answers your question i can also see my camera's reaching the 30 minute mark so i'm just gonna hit reset and i'm back uh right bwo official hey dom uh only a few minutes into the video and uh just to say i can't wait to start watching the new tutorial on sonic academy yes it is bloody hot in the uk right now i cycle to work and back home after a nine hour shift and it was unbearable oh yeah, I feel sorry for you. I would not want to have been cycling in that weather. Uh, perhaps I will think of a question by the end of this video. I guess you didn't. <laughs> uh, Zombo, wait, no keyword, but, but. Love your videos, Dom. Keep up the good work and have a great weekend. Thank you, you too. And Ricky John, hi Dom. It has indeed been ridiculously hot. Uh, having to wear a dust suit at work all week is not recommended. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's not good. Well, I mean, as I've been saying, I've been, uh, prepping the ceiling and everything so uh, the, for, for you builder guys out there um the ceiling was uh so it was old school plaster the gritty stuff chipboard wallpaper on that painted several times under and over that lining paper twice then wallpaper on top of that so there was like five layers of crap i had to get off using a little scraper uh so yeah so in the middle of the heat you can imagine i got pretty hot um got through the first couple of parts of the stoic tutorial just before watching this great stuff so far highly recommend it uh not to drone on about this whole hats thing but i'm glad you cleared that up for me as i have also been baffled um yeah that was a weird one i've, I've still not i haven't looked into it i've been too busy but um has anyone uh found any answers for that um I really want to know why someone would put, I think you were saying like four or five hats stacked on top of each other. Um, it just seems really, really weird. That's like, you know, if you were, if you had a kick drum and you liked a particular transient or click or attack or whatever, and you stacked five of them on top of each other, to me that, I don't know, let's not get back into that, but, but, but actually, I kind of want the answer. Uh, oh, I can see there's a couple of replies here as well. Uh, no questions from me, so back to the Stoic tutorial. Have a great weekend. You too. Uh, Zombo's replied uh, about the whole hi-hats thingy. I use a lot of them in my tracks, three or four hats. They have a rhythm and a shaker loop sometimes, and I have to mix them. I can't just put them in the track and call it a day. I have to EQ them, put a little bit of reverb, not all the time, but most of the time. Uh, Joyride and a lot of bass house producers uh, does this to get a full top end. Hope this helps. Uh, by the way, I'm not a pro, so yeah, hope this helps. Uh, Ricky's replied, Zomba thanks. My assumption was one closed sizzle hat, a softer hat, shaker for 16ths or whatever pattern. Uh, some kind of open hat. Yeah, see, that would make more sense, I guess, if I had... Uh, maybe a loose but semi-closed hat running sixteenths and then an open hat for your eighth notes and then maybe a shaker one sixteenth note before the kick or something so you get that kind of shuffle rhythm um i guess that would make sense uh but to have four or five playing the same patterns at the same time feels like overkill 100 percent overkill i i, I can't I can't get my head around this. This is why it's bothering me. 
Uh, three or four playing over each other is definitely overkill. Uh, thanks for making it clear. Uh, I think it's common in house tracks to have multiple percussion loops to get the shuffle and energy going. This is Andrew Hollis. Uh, these loops have different hats in them. I suppose it is all about space and getting the mix right. So yeah, y you're all you're all in the, in the same area as me. I think we, I think we all agree that having three, four, five, six, hey, as many hats as you want. I love a good hi hat have as many as you want throughout a track but to stack them on top of each other playing the same pattern is just bananas um so yeah i kind of want to see someone doing that if you guys have seen a tutorial from someone or whatever an example of someone who's done that i i want to see it give me a link below because um yeah i i need to I need to see it to believe it. It just seems crazy to me. Um, yeah, it just seems so counterintuitive. Anywho, that, my friends, is it for this week. Um, even though I woke up late, I'm hoping it's not too late. So, yeah, it should be all right, I think, hopefully for time. Uh, yeah, so there we go. That is the end of our video uh keyword as i say is darktronica if you've made it this far into the video comment the word darktronica to let me know that you have made it this far uh, otherwise have a great weekend and i'll see you next week cheers